Father, help us to take up a cross and to follow you in spirit as well as in truth. To you be all of the glory. So plant your word into the hearts of your children in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to have a, a simple but a very powerful message for you. For those of you who are praying that God will bless you. How many of you are praying that God, please bless me? Okay. Now we're going to talk about the yin and yang of being blessed. Blessings are not just for you. It's to help other people. So if we bless things just, gave just for us, it's... Now, what's the use of gaining the world but losing your soul? Amen to that. Okay? So for those of you ready to hear the word of God, we're going to give you a simple message but a powerful one. Simplicity with excellence is everything that we do in this church. Amen to that? Okay? So I remember one particular incident. We're going to make your life count. How many of you want to make your life count for something? Okay? So that when people think about you, when people remember you, they said, you know what? They made a difference. Okay, in my family, they made a difference. At my job, they make a difference. In playing golf, they made a difference. In doing ministry, they made a difference. You know why you make a difference? It's because it's to know God and to make him known, period. God gets all of the glory. Let your light so shine that by your good deeds, it glorifies the Sanctuary Christian Fellowship. Eh, wrong. It's to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it to glorify New Hope? Eh, wrong. Hope Chapel? Eh, wrong. First Presbyterian Church, wrong. No, it's to glorify, to God be all of the glory. That's really important that we understand that. We cannot put denomination or churches or fame in front of Jesus Christ. It does not work that way. So making your life count, as you read, you're going to, you're going to read uh, um, something that really touched me. It's what's a simple prayer that has a, had a wonderful impact on my life. And I started to read that. It says, you know what? It was in First Chronicles. If you read, Chronicles is just a boring book. Let me tell you the truth. Man, you know, Chronicle like this, but da, da, da. Read Chronicles, you read all these things. You just go nuts. This begets that, that begets that, that no more, da, da, da. And it just, but then the little, little phrase over here, you can get all this Chronicle, then First Chronicle, okay, 4, 9 and 10. There's a prayer of Jabez. It was really, it just impacted me for some reason. Why would God put a little prayer like that? Okay, how many of you know that God is very intentional? He makes no mistakes. Everything is for a reason. Everything is intentional. Nothing is coincidence, right? Why did he put that little prayer in something that was really boring to me? Okay, if God is really intentional, it's maybe he wants us to pay attention. And sometimes in all the chaos of your life, something happens and you go, wow, that was God. But that was God speaking to more, making to me, nobody else. I remember one particular incident when our first trip to the, to the Philippines with Compassion International. We were in a, a place called Davao in the island of Mindanao, way, way south. And we went to the poorest of the poorest places. We sponsor three um, ch children in the Philippines and one in Mexico. But that really impacted my heart, the poorest of the poor children. They said, you know what? I might live in poverty, but poverty doesn't live in me. Wow, that impacted me big time. And when we started to pray for the kids, they were in lack, I tell you what. They were living in desolation, in isolation. They were li literally living in filth. And every time we asked them, what do you want us to pray for? It wasn't about material things. It was about, right, Keith? Can you pray that my faith will increase? Can you pray that we'll have opportunity to serve more? What? You never eat nothing. But all you want is to love the Lord and increase your faith. I remember one, one particular thing. Went to a specific church in Davao. It slips my mind. But we were there. We were about 29 different pastors from, from Hawaii. And uh, they wanted to showcase everything. Like, you know, this is the Compassion International. This show us. The kids, they were all nicely dressed and everything else, and they're singing songs. But I love to go in the back where the workers are. So I slipped away, and, and I sat down, and they were cooking for us, you know, the fried chicken, and they had bananas and some, some noodles and some Filipino um, uh, pastries. And I sat down, and I started to talk stories with them. And there was a, kind of a translation. That I don't know how to speak Filipino. I have an accent, but that's all about it. <laughs> What are you guys cooking? You know, that kind of stuff, right? And uh, so 
they wondered why would this pastor from a faraway place that they have no idea or had little idea where I was from, why would he come down and talk stories with us? I love to do that. So we were talking stories, we were laughing, and you know what? I was part of their sample ministry. I sampled everything. What'd you cook? Oh, okay, this looks different. Oh, I'll eat it anyway. And this is how you get into culture, right? If you eat the food. And it's really important, you know, eating grits for the first time. Oh, grits, what is grits? You know what I mean? Hush puppies, hush puppies. What is hush puppies? You throw food at a dog so they hush up, <laughs> right? That kind of stuff. We're eating select, we're eating this, we're eating that, and we're eating some strange stuff. But you know what? That's part of the culture, and it honors them. It's just like when you come to Hawaii, eat you, you eat spam musubi, man. I tell you, you in, right? Right? You eat Filipino food, dinoguan. Oh, you really in, right? So different things like that makes you, okay? How about poke? How about, okay, howly people? Remember when you first heard the words, oh, we're going to eat some poo-poos. What? <laughs> poo-poos, what is that all about, right? All derbs, you know, that kind of stuff. So we're there, we're talking stories, and there was a young man that came in the back. You know, when you see in your peripherals, you see them looking, right, looking and all that. So I called them over, we had a conversation, and, and they are, you know, I was surprised that they speak English very, 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 very well, right? They thought that I had an accent. Oh, really? I have accent, huh? So we're talking stuff, and I asked through the conversation. He was a leader in the church, young leader. He said, what would you like Jesus to do for you? He looked at me, and his eyes started to well up emotionally. He said, nobody ever asked me that question, Pastor. I said, no. What would you like? He said, I want God to increase my faith and use me more. I went, wow. Ah. And he was about, well, early 20s. So I prayed for him. I said, Father, would you give him the desires of his heart? And one word came into my mind. God says, tell him this, just one word. I shared what God said to me to tell him. And his eyes welled up and he, you know, one of those deep cries. <laughs> and he couldn't stop. Because it was a rhema word for him. A rhema word is a specific word for a specific person, for a specific time, for a specific reason. That word was granted. And he just welled up. He says, God's word and his timing is perfect. Just like I shared with Lily this morning, is I was trying to word, sing this song in Tagalog, and I was getting so tongue-tied, and God said to worship. And there's the line that just captured my soul. It was a rhema word for me. And God says, worship me. Not the song. Worship me. And when I started to sing that, I started to weep. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. You capture me with your grace. I will follow you. Even now, he's... <laughs> His tears was of joy and celebration. It was indescribable. Why would God use a total stranger from a place called IA 96701, goes to all the way to the Philippines where I didn't want to go in the first place, takes me from Manila, Metro Manila, takes me all the way down to Davao City. I went to this obscure little church, went to go, go eat chicken, and this guy, I, God gave a rhema word for him and it changed his life. Why are we going to the Philippines? Why are you here today? God knew from the beginning of time you'll be here, sitting down. Why did God send Ray and, 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 Cindy, and Cindy come to help us with our sound system? Dear, dear friends, when we're worshiping together at, at, at Hope Chapel, A New Hope in Hawaii Kai, and we're part of the men's ministry, why? It's because God has a rainbow word for you today. And that's really important to you. This young man had a heart and a passion that he wanted to serve God. It was not a just a want, it was a need. I need to do it. 
God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So God has a specific word. If you're really, 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 really looking for a rainbow word, today's your day. But this young man wanted to know and be assured of that he was doing God's will, not his own, own will. And God says, granted, it took years to do, but God says, granted. Today, I want to speak to those who are serious about your Christianity. For those who want to make a difference and make, make your life count for something bigger than yourself. It has to be a God thing. Something bigger than your dreams. Instead of making your dreams come true, I want you to seek the dream maker who implanted the seed of a dream inside of your heart and now for such a time as this, I want this to bloom where you're planted. Amen? Let me read this. This is a prayer that God loves to say yes to in advance. First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. That's why your mother named you Keith. Japanese mean painful, right? Keith. Okay. He was one of he was the one who prayed to God Israel. Okay. Oh, that you might bless me and expand my territory. Please, uh, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. So all you pain in your colleagues, God's going to bless you. <coughs> How many of you had a hard birth? I did. The umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck. Some of you are saying, did you live? Oh, I guess I'm here, right? <laughs> it was really a difficult birth. When I read the scripture, it reminded me when I prayed for this person in devout. His prayers was not that God would bless him for his own self-interest, but his personal goals was to make another's life more successful than, he, than his. <coughs> he wanted to, God to grant his prayers because he wanted to be used by God's purposes, not his own. When I focus on the principles of Jabez's prayer, it showed me something that really, 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 really spoke in deep in my heart. Number one, when you pray, ask God to use you to bless others. Oh, that you would bless me. Jabez asked God to bless him. Jabez wanted to be blessed so he could do God's will, not his will, in life. Remember when Jesus Christ was on the cross and he wanted to get off the cross? He says, Lord, can this cup pass me? And in the same sentence, he says, oh, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Was he in pain and suffering? Absolutely. But he was willing to go to pain and suffering for the will of his Father. And we should do the same thing also. One of, on one end of this prayer, we have to be made aware of. In Acts 20, 35, it says, I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. This is Paul saying. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Wow, big time. It shows that you're selfless, not selfish, that you want to bless others. On the other hand, we must be aware of James 4, 3. It says, and even when you ask, you don't get because your motives are all wrong. You want only that you will, only what will give you pleasure. Can see the difference, both sides. Okay. Yes, God wants to hear us. He wants to bless us. He wants to ask according to His will. Read John 15. It just blows you away. God chose you. Okay. So you have fruit. Ask anything you want in a. Okay, according to God's will, and it will be granted to you. Okay? God is not a genie. He's not a sugar daddy. We all know that. You cannot manipulate him and suck up to him and get his favor. Ah, wrong. Okay? Remember, God is God, creator of the universe, our heavenly father. He is omniscient. It means having complete or unlimited knowledge, awareness, or understanding, perceiving all things. So every time that you want to shuck and jive God, he's going to take a look at you and say these two words. Oh, really? Amen? 
How many times have I, mom and dad, okay, when your kids do that, and you know you know that they're lying, and you just look at them and go, oh, really? Bindia did that, okay? Or don't go there. Don't go there, okay? And if you go there, you went there, uh-oh, right? You have to really understand that. Now, our Heavenly Father will not give us anything that is not good for us, period. Why should he, if it's a faithful, faithful God, if it's a good God, why did he give you something that, you know, you're going to screw up a little bit more? When I ask God to bless me, and God goes, you know, I wasn't really a good Christian back then. He says, why should I give you more that you're going to screw up anyway? Uh-oh. I really had to dig deeper. Psalms 139, 1 through 7 is one of my go-to scriptures. Okay? It helped me to reconsider my prayer life and my life choices. It says, oh, Lord, have you, okay, oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know, my thoughts, even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessings on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, good or bad, God is there. And if you remember that and if you understand that, it'll stop you from sinning. I guarantee you that. But if you don't believe that, right, and you use God's word as a shield to hide your sin, it doesn't work. What was done in the darkness will be put into the light. God knows everything before you even say it, before you even do it, okay? And God, even God washing the feet of his disciples, one of his disciples, he knew that was going to forsake him. He tried his best. He said, brother, no go there. But guess what? He went there anyway, okay? So there is a freedom of choice we all do have. God is always for us, always for our best interest. He's far more interested in, the, is in accomplishing his will through us, even though we don't fully understand why. Sometimes we just say, I don't know, but you know what, Lord, I trust you. It's like God says, hey, Peter, walk on water. You go, oh, really? God, you know that man cannot walk on water. When God goes, yeah, I know, but with me, all things are possible. So get out of your boat. Only one of the disciples ventured onto the waters of impossibility. Even when he sank, Jesus Christ pulled him up anyway. Oh, you have little faith. Let me work on you a little bit more. Okay? How many of you feel like you're sinking? Come to my rescue. Where else can I go? God will save you. God is God. I say, see, these are some of these three scriptures I repeat over and over again. Why? Because I own it. I really own it. When I don't understand, Isaiah 55, okay, 8 to 12 says, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours, Nando. I am infinite. You are finite. I am, no, you are my creation. I am the creator. I know everything about you. I formed you in your mother's room. You are my masterpiece. I predestined you to do good works. If you do what I tell you to do, you will have the things that I have pre-programmed for you to have and to be. That's how simple it is. There's no EBGBs, no, no, no lightning, no clouds. It's just simple as it is. God just takes a look at you and says, you know, Thane, I love you, man. Simple as that. But God, I screwed up. I know. I was there. I saw it. I tried to stop you, but you so kolohe. <laughs> but you know what? God will redeem your mistakes and use your mess for a message. He'll turn things around. How do I know? Ta-da! Have I 
jammed up, screwed up. Yeah, have I turned away from God? Yeah. But God knew my heart. <coughs> he turned it around. <clears throat> Luke 22, 41 says, Father, again, not my will, but your will be done. I don't understand, Lord. I don't understand why you choose me. But you've chosen me. Let me be of honor to you. Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. We're not trusting the Lord in all of your ways. Don't lean on your own understanding. I'm not, Lord, don't, don't let me be wise in my own eyes. Help me just to lean on you, Lord. So every time we go through things, I just ask that. Like, I know, Lord, it doesn't make sense. Point number two, God ask. Okay, ask God to give you a passion. Okay, passion, a big desire. Okay, a goal, a dream, something. Why? None shall perish. I want him to give you a passion and compassion for the unsaved. Jesus Christ is coming soon. If you take a look at the world today, it is prophesied in such a time as this. So God is telling church, don't waste time Ex and expend my territory, Lord. Jabez wanted to enlarge his circle of influence to increase his responsibility. I want to do more for you, God. I just want to do, that's my passion. God has given you different gifts and passions. Whatever it is, use that passion whether it be golf, whether it be construction, whether it be air conditioning, whether it be surfing, whether it be mothering, whether it be cooking, use it so that others will be saved because God will put people in your sphere of influence whereby you will be the beautiful feet and the heart of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a pastor so that you can lead people to Christ. My Bible doesn't say that. It says you, with, okay, with the power of the Holy Spirit, will lead people to Christ. Isn't that cool? We can plant the seed. God will grow the seed. So our major thing is, if you take a look at that, it is really, really important. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 is ours. Every single Christian, go and make disciples, reach and teach them. What do you reach and teach them? Matthew 22, to love God and love others. That's how simple it is. But it's not simplistic. It will take effort. Okay? The major most, again, the major and most important goal we have as Christians, Christ ones, is to make a difference wherever you are planted, bloom, flourish, wherever you are, whatever skills you have or don't have, bloom where you're planted. Somebody can serve. Everybody can serve. Amen? Somebody can cook. Somebody can make cookies. Somebody can move a table. Somebody can okay, have the gift of making money. can invest into the ministries. Whatever it is, God gave you the gift of doing that. You have to make a difference to be a learner and a server. No sense having all the talent and using it for nothing but selfish gain. Amen. Okay? Now, this is a sobering truth. Everybody take a breath. You'll never see that breath again for the rest of your life. That breath will take you closer to your last breath on earth. Amen? And sometimes we don't understand that principle. We think we have unlimited, or no, we think we are, you know, we are just, how many of you have kids think they're invincible? How many think you are invincible? Okay? So that's really important. Only with God, the invincible one, we can do all things. So that's really important that we do that. Okay? Always give people the opportunity to say yes. A lot of people say, what if they say no? But what if they say yes? Their lives will be changed. Look at my brother Tom. Age 62. Self-sufficient. Found out that he was out of control when he had prostate cancer. He said, brother, I tell you what, I am out of control. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. Does something that major have to happen to you that you will share the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ? You know what? It's really, really, really going to be sad to know that you had the opportunity before they died and you didn't take the opportunity. I don't want you to be, you know, to be con you know, convicted okay, by me. Let the Holy Spirit convict your heart because there's somebody that you know that doesn't know Jesus. All you do is plant a seed. Okay? 
Give them a chance to say yes, even when you think they'll say no. Just give them a chance. Number three, ask God for his continual help. Please be with me in all I do. That's what Jabez prayed. Remember I said this, the closer you get to God, the less room you have for anything else. Get close. I remember going through um, the rice paddies in, in Vietnam, and uh, there was, you know, I had booby traps all over the place. And our scout, Vietnamese scout said, we're going, okay, we're going to nighttime. And he said, really important, okay? When he said really important, we better pay attention, right? Really important. Why? Your life is going to depend on it. <coughs> he said, wherever I put my foot, you put my foot. Stay close. Because if you go left or right, <laughs> guess what we did? We stayed really close. Why? Our life depended on wherever he put his foot, we put our, our, our foot down there. Okay? And we just, everybody did that. Same thing with our spiritual walk. God says, wherever I go, you go. My word is a lamp unto thy feet. Okay? It's important that we do that. If we veer off left or right and not the straight and narrow, I got plenty of scars to prove that, man. Okay? I was SOS for a long time. Stuck on stupid. I wanted my way and didn't work. So I'm going to do it Yahweh. It works all of the time. Amen? So that's important. Okay? So that's really, John 15 says, 15, 5 says, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Woo! Okay, get this. I like this line. Apart, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Boy, I tell you what, that's a prophetic word for some of us today. I love this scripture. Okay, Matthew 7, 21, 23 says, okay, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father, obedience, in other words, will enter, will, uh, in, Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, you, okay, I never knew you get away from me you who break God's laws it's an intimacy you can do things but not a relationship it's just like I can say you know I know Tiger Woods oh really can you introduce me to him oh I don't know him that well yeah well I know certain people yeah, can you oh I know I know all of them casually but I don't know them intimately some people know of Jesus Christ know of our heaven father but don't have an intimate relationship with a heavenly father nor with Jesus Christ. Take up your cross. Follow me. Put your foot in my footsteps. You will have the things that I have. You will have the promises I promise you if you are obedient to me. God says, my disciples, okay, who do my will are my disciples who love me. Okay, so that's really important. God exposes the people who only sounded religious. Okay, sometimes I sit around with people, I sit around in meetings, I meet people, man, I tell you what, they can, they can rip off scriptures. They're the gospel Gestapo. Oh, you know this passage, da, 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 da. I said, oh, really, what does that mean to you then? How does that practically affect your everyday life? Well, uh, or, you know, Pastor, man, God told me to tell you. I go, oh, really? I'm on speaking terms with the Lord. He never say anything. It's about intimacy. My wife and I can look at each other, and you know what? We know what each other's thinking. She can finish my sentences. How many of you husbands and wives are like that? Right? Some of us just have to look. You know, sometimes the look mean, is more mean than the words. Yeah? You look at them, you go, especially one of these. <laughs> huh? How many of you got the look? How about this look? Yeah? Sometimes you can feel God looking at us. He goes, my dad used to do that. My dad was a man of few words. 
But when he disagreed, he did one thing, one sound. <laughs> that's all he had to do. We knew there was disapproval, right? Old school. So that's what's important. Matthew 15, 6 or 9 says, okay, so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are, f are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. Be careful. Ephesians 2, 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you cannot take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none can boast about it. It's a gift. You cannot earn salvation. Matthew 7, 24 says, anyone who listens to my teachings and follow it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on a rock, solid rock. <coughs> Number four is ask for God's protection and keep me from all trouble and pain. Anybody gonna need to pray that every day? Lord, can you protect me from myself? Ooh, big one, right? Because you know what? Because our ego, because our will, because of our emotions, we're driven by that, not by the word of God. How many of you are emotional buyers? I tell you what, if you're selling makeup or golf clubs or surfboards, they sell emotion. You might not need it, but oh, that bugger is nice. You can get you another 30 yards, yeah? Ooh, man, I can, I can see the line. I can see the line. I can put it. Oh, look at his dress. Boy, it colors, okay, it matches the color burst in my eyes. Oh, look at that hairdo. Man, I tell you, really? And you know what? We do this over and over and over again. Then you know what? You buy things that you cannot afford to impress people who don't like you. Uh, anybody like that? I was. I had to drive a certain kind of car because I'd have the image. People would look at me, oh, the guy is really successful, but they didn't know I was broke. Yeah. We walk around as Christians sometimes. We frequent certain churches, certain ministries. We give to a, cer uh, a certain people, da, 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 da. Oh, you know what, man? I tell you what. How many of you have Bibles that, you know what, people have a lot of marks on it, okay, different colors inside, and you want to mosey up to the hey, Close to people, oh, look at my Bible. I'm so holy. I used to do that. Why? I wanted people, I wanted to impress people that I was so smart. Ah, didn't work. God's, you know what God said? I'm not impressed by that. Okay? So I want you to press into me, not try to impress other people. So that's really important. So when I started to do that, it changed my heart because I wanted a heart for Christ. So as for God's protection, Matthew says, Okay, 6, uh, 6, 13 says, And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. God will not, no, God will use the devil for his purposes to strengthen us. Why do bad things happen to good people? God allows things. When In hindsight, how many of you have been through some stuff, man? I tell you what, oh. But when you look back, you go, wow, that's what God. It's like birthing pains, right, Stephanie? Right? Go, oh man, like, ooh, that's hide, hide it. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Ter okay, did I say terrible? Terrible. Okay, look at Kaya, yeah, look at Eloli. Uh, oh, I feel like a elephant. You look like one too. Uh, yeah, we went down to the emergency, prayed for her and all. Uh, and you know what? But after they came out, oh, forget the pain. Forget the suffering. Why? The blessings were bigger than the bummers. So whatever you're going through, if you're suffering, you know what? Sometimes I say, good Lord, go get them. Give them more pain. Why? There's a pain of change and the pain of remaining the same. Choose. If you don't change for good, you'll change for staying the same or worse, getting back. I had a friend who went skiing down in, uh, they went to Banff. Okay, down in, uh, what's that? Um, up in Vancouver, Someplace like that, John, up there. Yeah, Calvary. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, he went skiing. Really hard-headed guy. He thought, oh, you know, big husky guy and all that. He went, <coughs> went surfing, bicycle riding. And he went down, he broke his arm. 
Okay? It was a small fracture, but he said, ah, small kind of pain, no worry, no worry, no worries, no worries. Yeah, I can handle, I can handle. Said, okay. He didn't go to the doctor. So, okay, a few weeks went by. His arm was like that, right? I said, hey, hey, how's your arm? Oh, it's okay. It only hurts when I do this. <laughs> well, don't do that then, you know what I mean? So finally, the pain was so bad, he had to go to other doctor, orthopedic surgeon. He says, brother, you have a broken arm. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> what do you mean? So he said, well, it's going to be painful, but you know what? You can handle it, maybe, because you're so tough. He said, I have to break the bone at the broken, and I have to straighten it out and put it back. He says, okay. You want some Novocaine or whatever it is, painkiller. Says, then I can handle. Oh, thank you, Ed. So he gave him, no, 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 give me some painkillers, painkillers. Then he, guess what? He, they, they said it correctly, and guess, then it healed properly. Okay? Some of us Christians are walking around with broken arms. God loves brokenness. Go to him, let him break it again, make it aligned, put it straight, and it'll heal probably by his word and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Or else you'll be walking around. Yeah? Like, yeah, Laurie, walk around so leg, yeah? <laughs> Tell you what. And she goes, maybe I should not use these high heels, but that's okay. Okay? And that's really important. Set it straight. If your life is broken, God loves brokenness. Let him reset it. Amen? Okay, go to God. It's really important. So we need the great physician to reset our Christian or our spiritual brokenness. Nothing else will put it in place. For those who are suffering, okay, go through it with Jesus Christ. You cannot do it alone. All the bad mistakes that you had will be redeemed for the glory of God, period. You'll turn around at blessings, okay? He'll turn that around that looked like a bummer into to glorify him. And people take a look at you and say, you know what, you must believe something bigger than yourself. We, we are sinners living in a sinful world. There will be hardship. Can you hear an amen? amen? There will be illnesses. Can you hear an amen? amen? There will be stupidity. Amen. Ooh, I didn't have to ask for anything, right? There will be disappointments and a bunch of other things that will litter your, your life until you get to heaven. Okay? Handle it with Jesus Christ. God says, with me all things are possible. You will have many sorrows and problems in the world, but take heart. I have overcome all of them. And with me, all of them, All of them will be answered because I am for you. But Lord, I made mistakes. I knew, and I know you made mistakes. Repent. Amen? Simple. Maybe that was a rhema word for somebody today. Jabez wanted to succeed, increase his sphere of influence, not for him, but for God's glory. It is equally important to stay close to Jesus Christ, as close as you can. Where he puts his foot, you put your foot there. He says, take up your cross, you take up your cross. Taking up your cross is living according to his will. That's what he means, take up your cross and follow me. Okay? It's, remember this, this is not a one-time thing. Okay, how many of you have sinned over and over and over again? It wasn't a one-time thing, right? So, again, forgiveness is not a one-time thing. You have to be consistently be healed and comforted, renewed, strengthened, okay? Repented by the blood of Jesus Christ. Some of you cannot resolve certain things in life, okay? Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ and move on. You will always have disagreements. Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Let his sacrifice cover you. Remember this, God will protect you only if you ask. But what is really important, it says that Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. He was passionate about it. He said, God, use me. Anoint me. Help me to do your will, not mine. Lord, I need, I need you more in my life. I want to make a difference. And number five, God will answer. God granted him his requests. 
James 5, 16 says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Okay, everyone look at me. All of you are righteous in God's eyes. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And after you repent, God will grant you your wishes. Jabez set an example, a great example for us. God loves to hear our prayers, heartfelt prayers. Not this kind, God is good, God is great, Dad, thank you for his good food, amen. That kind of stuff, okay? He wants us to sit down. And sometimes your prayer is as simple as this. Thank you, Lord. Said with the right heart, it's important. But remember this, you gotta start now, even if you start small. When I first sat down, when I, I heard Lilia pray, I said, oh, my Lord, kind of long. <laughs> we're in a prayer circle one time, and the men's ministry, we're in the first start men's ministry, and, you know, everybody in the circle prays. I said, Lord, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Pass, pass. <laughs> my friend Marcus, he's a pastor at uh, Neil by Ea. And he's a seasoned Christian, man. He was pulling down strongholds. He went, Holy Spirit coming up, pa and da da da, according to this, oh, da 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 da. I'm over there, oh Lord, I have to follow this guy. He <laughs> went, You know what my prayer was? Lord, thank you. That's it. Let me give you another prayer that Lord, Lord cracks up. Uh, Pastor Wayne shared this with us when uh, they were in men's group in Hilo, and this guy, street guy, okay, just got saved, and what's really wonderful, and he was kind of rough, you know, he's using some colorful words, you know, the F words and the S words and all that, now, it's not faith and salvation, by the way, you know, street, right, so they're, they're, they were praying, and he said, hey, pass the way, he says, oh, what do you want, brother, can I pray, <laughs> and everybody going, oh, oh, and Wayne, you know, Wayne is real gracious. I said, okay, brother, go for it. Okay. So sit down, and he was praying. Oh, Lord, I am so effing grateful, and this S stuff is good, Lord. You know, and you see, and everybody's looking at Pastor Wayne on the side of the aisle, and you could hear, you know, everybody shaking and laughing. <laughs> and you know what? He says, in Jesus' name. Man, I am so dang happy that I am having saved. And everybody, and Queen goes, thank you. That was the best prayer I heard today. <laughs> it's not the words, because the word's going to change. It's the heart of worship, not the art of worship. It's the heart of prayer, not the art of prayer. Amen? Art of prayer is this vain repetition over and over. No, sometimes you sing a song over and over and over. You pray the same over and over and over. You say the same prayer over and over and over. And God said, I heard them already. I heard them. Hey, I, pow, I already I heard them. Start thanking me for it. Amen? You listen to my children's prayer. Lord, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for our food on that table. Why? Give thanks with the grateful. Give thanks to the Holy One. Why? Because He's given Jesus Christ our Lord. So change your prayer around a little bit, okay? And don't let God go, hey, bro, I heard that. I heard that in 1922, and you're still saying the same prayer. Change the prayer into a blessing, to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's all you have to say sometimes. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for choosing Lily and I to go forth and make a difference. I lift our ministry up. I lift my family up, Father. We thank you for friends who are willing as an extension of our honey to watch over our children. They're not children anymore, but they can, you know, they're not our adults, they're our kids. So we thank you for Jessalyn, we thank you for Mandy, we thank you for Heidi and Thane. We thank you for many who are, he said, we'll cover whatever they need, Father. We'll cover them in our absence. That's Ohana, where everyone matters and no one is left behind. To you be all the glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. We thank you guys.
We have to leave in about five minutes. So have a wonderful week in the Lord. Remember next week, we're over there. Everybody say over there. Over there. Okay, good. Everybody Oh, Holy Spirit, you didn't turn me off, eh, bro? Oh, wow, jeez, jeez. Okay. Okay, watch this. Okay? Okay, everybody. Watch this. Everybody point to north. <laughs> Some people going, well, I don't know. Okay, there you go. Remember, there's a difference between north and true north. Amen? north okay now you go like this east okay you see this over here that's manila philippines where we're heading in two hours god bless you guys